comes out to the Academy, what he wants is to become like every single one of your kids, the entire population, and humiliated you, it insulted you, censured you with what you have never done. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Vermeer, and I'm just going to go throughout her life and talk about the lessons that she's learned along her way, and where, perhaps we could apply them to our own lives. As a child, Vermeer was really basically used and abused by their family. They, um, she was abandoned by her parents because uh, one of them died and so on and so forth. So forth. I don't know the whole story, but um, when she ended up moving in with her aunt, who didn't want anything to do with her, but was only living there because her uncle was a banker, she was not exactly at the top of the family. They basically used her to do whatever she wanted, a bit like Cinderella. Her siblings were constantly beating up on her and insulting her and making her feel like she didn't matter. And right at one point, she was intimidated when her brother decided to come over, came over to her randomly in the library and hit her because apparently she was spending too much time studying and not enough time working. And she hit back and said, hey, don't do this to me, and started censuring him for all of the things that he'd done to her. And finally, this culminated when he yelled to his mother and she got locked in her room for hours and was completely alone and scared. But finally, when the opportunity presented for her to leave and go to school, there was this crucial moment in the book where she stood up to her guardian and said, you were the one that was wrong, not me. You were at fault. You hurt me and I will remember for the rest of my life what you have done to me. She was not scared of the woman who had made her feel like she was morally wrong in every respect for her entire life, and she was only 10 years old. I think that this can apply to us, too. We have to have the resolution to not take our self-identity, our idea of what's right and wrong, simply from other people who may influence us and who abuse us. Now, studying what she learned at her school was really quite significant because she learned to let go of her past grief. She was talking to her friend, who would later die, and um, saying, you know, oh gosh, I'm beaten down with all of the terrible things that my family did to me, and I'm never going to forget them, and I'm filled with anger, and I'm filled with grief, and I'm filled with sorrow. But her friend just looked at her and said, life's too short to be filled with all of that, to be lived wondering if we'll ever be able to forgive the people that hurt us. And so they she did forgive her mother, and she was able to live a very much freer and more peaceful existence because of this. I think that this can apply to us, because a lot of us have been unfortunately abused and abused by people in our lives. Most of us do face the injustice that people put upon us, but if we spend too much time dwelling on it, then we miss opportunities. There's a great quote by uh, Shakespeare, cowards die three times before their death to forget but once. So if we're too cowardly to face up to the things that have happened or to forgive the people that have hurt us, then we're really just subjecting ourselves. If we're going to move on, she got a good education. And yet at the same time, she was very humble in that she wouldn't, you know, move up beyond her status as a woman and as a dependent on other people. And most of her fathers thought of her, most of them thought of her as this great liberal feminist who was saying all sorts of radical things to her time about how, you know, women should be equal to men and women shouldn't be subjected to the same, to the different things from men. But all of these things were contained in her thoughts. Within her society, she had the humility to go, okay, God has put me here and I'm going to live it the best that I possibly can. And yes, I do have lower status. Yes, I do have a lesser education. And so I'm not going to try to be more than I'm supposed to be. And she was the ultimate woman. She was a fantastic wife, and she taught others so much that she never even really knew. So in conclusion, I think that there are ways that we can be like Jane Eyre. For one, I would recommend reading this book because you can learn quite a bit from it. And for another, don't take your idea of what's right and wrong from other people. Take it from yourself. Reach into your own soul and decide what matters in the world. What is the right thing to do in a given situation? Second, it is good to be able to let go of the past wrongs that people have done to you. It is good.
to be able to forgive and to move on. Because, you know what, if you're just always let, letting the grief and the anger overcome you, then the, the abuser has won. But if not, if you move on into a better life, a higher existence, then you are the one who has won. And this is what Jane Eyre did. This is her legacy. And this is the legacy of Charlotte Bronte. And there are things, sometimes we do have to have the humility to realize that we need to learn to be on the spirit. We need to learn to move more towards the place that God has led us and make the best out of it. So I recommend reading the book, moving on from past hurts, and looking into your own self to 